But it's it's interesting, right? That I I feel compelled to start today's show talking about a topic which uh, we've been talking about here for a couple of weeks and a subject or a woman who we've been talking about for a couple of months, a sport, not basketball, but women's basketball, which we never talked about previously. And honestly, that to me is what's behind so much of this. So over the weekend, Caitlin Clark had, she had a rough go of it. Now, it started on Friday night when they beat Chicago. They beat the Chicago Sky, and of course, there was the uh, the Kennedy Carter foul. And apparently, if you watch the film, she caught an like, inadvertent elbow from Caitlin Clark and runs up and hip checks her when she wasn't expecting it. And, you know, the Twitter sphere kind of explodes. Now, fast forward to yesterday, and the Indiana Fever got curb stomped by the New York Liberty, and Caitlin Clark had far and away her worst game as a professional player, probably her worst game all year if you factor in how she, when she played collegiately. I don't even think it's close, right? One of ten, three points, one of seven from three. That's not good. Uh, so it's pretty obvious to anybody with a brain that the ladies of the WNBA, not all of them, but a good number of them, uh, set their sights on when Caitlin Clark plays – we're going to shut her down, and we're going to um, we're going to welcome her to the W our style. Now, the Chicago Sky has a coach named Teresa Weatherspoon. If you know Teresa Weatherspoon, is a great player, great player. Um, she said, "Kennedy Clark and the team will learn from an incident in Saturday's game when Carter committed a flagrant one foul." Quote, physical play, intensity, and competitive spirit are hallmarks of Chicago Sky basketball. Kennedy got caught up in the heat of the moment in an effort to win the game. She and I have discussed what happens. It was not appropriate. It's not what we do, not who we are. Kennedy understands there are better ways to handle situations on the court. She will learn from this. We all all are. It's fine. I'm not going to make a big statement about the statement. Whatever. You're either coaching it or allowing it. That's the challenge just for, for me, right? Like, if you don't lay down the law over somebody's behavior, sideline decorum, body language, shot selection, you know, obviously the collegiate level, you got other things as well. If you don't, you're allowing it. But, man, has this Caitlin Clark thing taken on more and more life? Uh, Pat McAfee chimed in earlier today, and he had this interesting take. What the WNBA currently has is what we like to describe as a cash cow. There is a superstar. And we're not saying that the players on the court need to act any differently. That's the athletes are going to do what athletes are going to do in any sport. I think we're all learning that WNBA, (laughs) that's old school football, baby. Oh, yeah, no. That is is old old school football. But I would like the media people that continue to say, this rookie class, this rookie class, this rookie class, not. Just call it for what it is. There's one white yeah. for the Indiana team yep. who is a superstar. Yeah, I don't know why he added in the B word there or whatever, uh, although that's what Kennedy Carter called her. Um, I'm not offended by it, and I think it's – I think it's uh, – honestly, it's Pat trying to draw attention to himself, right? Like there's no real take there other than – the honesty, which is nobody cares about this league except for Caitlin Clark. I, I I can't help you otherwise. Every metric tells you that. And the problem here is that we're wrapping in, what gets wrapped up in it is all of the, the first, the main thing I think is the jealousy over the attention that she's getting. And I don't look at jealousy as a bad thing but how you process that jealousy and what you do with that energy is where so many of these women make themselves look like they're teenage girls. But the reality is that if you want to tell us that women aren't catty and women aren't jealous, the women aren't different, women are similar to men and how they handle themselves, that you can say all you want, but how they have proport themselves is 
Like, Zion Williamson came in with gigantic expectations. Did any of this happen to him? LeBron James, did any of this happen to him? And I'll grant you that there's even the the fact that her teammates were nowhere to be found when she gets hip checked and she's laying there. Whereas it's your job. I I I'll, we can go more into this on the podcast. My first game at Notre Dame was an exhibition game against the German professional team, and we lost the game. But the next morning, when we watch film. And the whole focus of the next practice was the fact that they had a seven-footer who took a couple cheap shots on our guards and the fact that he wasn't taken out by our big guys and fouled hard by our big guys on the next possession or we fouled one of their guards. Like, that's how the sport works. Oh, you want to foul me? That's okay. Don't drive to the hoop because we're going we're gonna to clean you out. But there was none of that. So there's only three possibilities, and we, we do have to open ourselves up to the third possibility. Here's the first one. These women are just jealous, catty. They don't know how to handle it. That, to me, is the most likely scenario. Scenario two is the, the fever just don't have good culture, and it hasn't been discussed, and their coach does not know what she's doing. A possibility, probably not likely because all of these women have played basketball for years and they know how it's supposed to go. And here's the third possibility. It is possible that Caitlin Clark, and look, I know people around her. I haven't heard this from anybody around her, but I, it's possible that she rubs people the wrong way, that she's aloof, that all this attention makes her kind of separate from the team. And because she's separate from the team, they're like, hey, you want to be a superstar? You handle yourself. We don't need it. It's possible. I think the most likely scenario is just rampant jealousy. Hey, we've been grinding away our whole lives. We've traveled all over the world to play basketball. I mean, Kennedy Carter, she's been in and out of the WNBA. She's played overseas. She's played in Turkey. You know, you've been grinding. And only now they're paying attention because this girl who I don't think is very good. Now, I'm not saying me. I'm saying other women. Why does she get the shine? Instead of embracing the shine and using it to propel everybody, there's why her? What's so special about her? My point is always it doesn't matter. And if you're jealous and you want your own, then beat her. That's the the biggest clown show of Kennedy Carter's deal was there's no mention of the fact that they lost the game by one point. And that foul gets you free uh, free throws, and the free throws end up being the deciding factor in the game. <laughs> um, it's it's really interesting. I I I I don't know. I didn't tell you guys this, but we've come up with a motto at Green Bay this year. Motto. Do you want to know what it is? You guys intrigued at all? Please, let's do it. Walk the walk. Oh, it's good. You like that? Kind of reminds me of the old uh, Four Seasons song, Walk Like a Man. Yeah, this one is more, you know, it's the old, you can talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. It's an expression I love. And, again, I'm I'm accused because I've been a talker my uh, my entire professional career of, okay, I've talked about it, now you got to walk it. And that's the issue with all these women. They, they, they want to talk it, but they won't walk it. No one cares about all of your past issues or that the league used to fly a uh, commercial or you know you bounce from arena in arena or you like, they don't care i'm sorry that no one paid attention to your league for 25 years that's that's called business okay and in the real business world the sport probably would have gone under but it looked good for the nba for a long time and they stuck with it and now they're going to make legitimate money on it but not for long if you guys can't get your ship together. So I just, this is the worst parts of women. And look, there's bad parts of men too. Like, let's just be honest. Like, d- dudes have all different sorts of things within us that separate us from women. Okay, that make us different. The old, um, what, Venus and Mars, that what it is? Mars and Venus. But the reality is, and I've seen this in our profession, men, as 
women, and it's I it's I I get it. It's really really hard to be a woman. You ask any. I'm going to tell you something that everyone in the industry knows that nobody talks about on air. Women feel like once they hit the age of forty, everybody wants to put them behind the desk. That when they're young and they're vibrant and they're beautiful, they're sideline reporters, and then or they're they're standing up. And when they get older, and even when they're talented, they put them behind the desk. Right, and that sucks. That's wrong because no one judges guys. By the way, how old is Tom Rinaldi? Who's great, by the way. You know any of these other men who do things? Nobody, but women. That's what the industry has done to women for years. Well, the the issue that I've always seen is women in our profession. It's not that they're not united. It's that they're incredibly divisive towards each other. The cattiness and jealousy is a real thing. Like you go by the makeup room when there's a woman getting her makeup done and all it is is a, is a bitch fest about all the different problems and usually problems with other women. I, I find this to be a, like a fascinating study of human nature. I mean, look, Caitlin Clark clearly struggling. She's a rookie. I'm sure there's going to be some fatigue set in, not just because she played in a college season that went to the championship game and there's virtually no break, but also all these other things that she's done. It's exhausting. And so many, she's the focal point of every scouting report, and she's they're breaking her down, and she's struggling at times to be herself. I get it. She's playing against better competition, and they're playing a ton of games. And there's a ton of attention. I have no doubt she's exhausted. So I'm sure that's going to hurt her play. But man, on some level, you give credit to the WNBA because they figured out a way to make themselves relevant when they've been irrelevant for years. On the other hand, somebody needs to tell these ladies, hey, just because there's NBA attached to the W doesn't mean that you're in the NBA. And everything in this league is like a caricature of what women believe the NBA is like. It's like you crank it up to a notch of like three or four. Right? Do they welcome rookies to the NBA? Sure. Is it so over the top and right there where no one, like you didn't even hide it. Like what are you doing? The trash talk is the same. Dudes trash talk, but you don't see them like stopping and yelling and pointing to nearly, it's overly dramatic. It's more like the WWE than it is like the NBA. And, you know, I believe that, that in many ways, foreign players are like that as well. Like, one of the reasons that foreign players curse so much is because they're, they're modeling what they think or they see how guys talk. Yet the problem with that is, when they first get, when you first are with an American teammate, American teammates always, and I know this when I was the American teammate, we always teach you the good curse words. And we always want to know the curse words. I can tell you curse words in Hebrew and in Russian and in Spanish and in French. I can't speak a lick of French. Un, deux, trois, quatre, right? But other than that, can't. But I can tell you the curse words. Hebrew, I can't read it. I know a couple phrases. I know the curse words. The point is, that's what the WNBA is. It's a caricature of what they believe the NBA is like. And then you ramp it all up to like a, a, a power of three, if you will. So the good news is, we're still talking about it. The bad news is, it, it, it's exhausting. And there's not the payoff of the NBA and the NFL in terms of the quality of play. 